Hey guys, welcome to a new video. In this video here, we're going to take a look at some new state-of-the-art monocular depth estimation models. So we can basically just take a single image, throw it into a model, and then we'll get a depth map out. So in the previous videos here on the channel, we have created a bunch of videos covering the Midas model, both how you can use it. It is still like faster compared to these models, but now we have some recent research where they're using the fusion models to create these depth maps. So we can take a single image, throw it through the model, and then we'll get the depth map out. And we have really good accuracy on that right now with new state-of-the-art models. So before we're going to jump into the first one, I'm just going to show you this example from Google DeepMind. I'm not sure if they were going to release the code, but this is a really nice model. And then we're going to see another one where all the code is already available and you can play around with it. And it is significantly better compared to the Midas model and any out there. It is not as fast because it's using these diffusion models, which is basically just uh, created on top of stable diffusion. So they're using those encoders to be able to generate these really nice depth maps. So here we can just see some examples. Let's just go through it. Here we can see the input and we can also see the ground truth. So this is the input image. And then we can see the results down here at the bottom. So to the right, we have uh, their model. So here from Google DeepMind, zero shot metric depth with a fill of view condition diffusion model. So again, all of these examples that we're going to take a look at and we're going to go into the code, see how we can run it, both the examples in Hawk and Face Space, but also how we can run it in a Google Colab notebook. So here we can see that they have ours and they're also comparing it to this Zoe depth. So this Zoe depth model is also really good for depth estimation. And these models here are actually like predicting um, absolute depth values. So if we're talking about like Midas, the Midas model, it is relative. So all the depth values are relative to the camera where now we have these models trying to predict absolute depth. So we actually like get a, like a metric to all the different values in our image. So now we can actually go in and predict that this chair here is one meter away from our camera. So we can see that this so that here, it has some problems like when we're getting into the depth in the image or like the further out we get in the image. Where you can see with this one from Google DeepMind, we have really good accuracy. Even this classroom here, if we just take a look at that. So we have the ground truth and then we have it compared to their model down here at the bottom. So there's still some way to the ground truth here, but we're going to see the other model in just a second, which is the new state of the art one, and we will have code for that. So if we just use like a stereo camera, for example, we often just get a depth map like this. And now we can see that these models here act like significantly more dense and more smooth compared to the other ones. Also, if you just take outside, so one of the other main problems with depth estimation model, especially for monocular, is both combining outdoors and indoors scenes. So let's now just jump into the second model here that we're going to mainly take a look at in this video here. We both have a Google Colab notebook, Hawk and Face Space, code, and also paper. And, and again, these are also based on a diffusion-based model uh, where they're using stable diffusion for generating these monocular depth maps. Again, it's just a single image, throw it into the model, and then we get our depth map out. These are not as fast as Midas, so in Midas and those models, we have actually tried to run that on a live webcam. Definitely go check out those videos if you're interested in that and if you want to use some real time for basic optical, optical avoidance or whatever you want to use it for, definitely go check those videos out. It is very easy to set up. But if you want really high accuracy, as we can see here, we can now go and use these diffusion based models. So this is the results that we get with this model. If we just scroll a bit further down, we have an overview. And again, we have our side by side comparison. So here we have ours and they're comparing it to something called Levres. So we can just see the details here, even in the outdoor scenes. So just take a couple of more examples here. We can see the outdoor scenes. We can just see the details in this depth map here. If you just go back and forth between our input image and the output. So again, this is just a single image, but you can see all the details. We can even see the rings here and we have a bar behind it and it predicts that these rings are in front of the bars. So the warmer the colors are, the closer the optics are to the camera. So here we can see that the red colors are closer to the camera where like the, the, the blue colors are further away. If you just scroll a bit down, we can see like how the fine tuning works. It is using this latent encoder. It is the exact same um, encoder for actually like getting into latent space. So how we can get the image and also the depth map into a latent space and to use the variational auto encoder, exact same one as stable diffusion. And that's why we can get these really high detail depth maps. So this could probably be used for like, for example, some, some face recognition, facial recognition. Let's say that you have an iPhone, you want to do like facial facial unlock, you can probably use this model here to go in and generate like a depth map and act like go in and generate these point clouds. And then you can throw that into a model combined with some other features for basically just classifying if this is the correct person or not. So that that might be some really good and cool um, use cases for 
these specific models and again they're like kind of slow so they're not running real time it takes like a couple of seconds to process these images depending on your hardware but basically just encoding it into a latent space they have some sampling noise that they're adding as well to the depth map and then they're doing concatenation and then they use like a basic uh, latent fusion unit structure so this is basically just a unit structure and combined with a latent uh, encoder from stable diffusion we also have the inference scheme here. So we have our input image, latent encoder, we add the noise here as well for the inference, and then we basically just diffuse our image and we get the depth map out here at the end. If we just compare some with some other methods before we're going to jump into the code, we can just see that we have mainly been focusing on MITRES here on the channel. It is still very good, especially if you want to run um, real-time applications and they also have a bunch of different models out there Midas here, we can see that this Marigold here, which is the new model that we have taken a look at, it is significantly better and outperforming all the other models here on pretty much like all the benchmarks. So the most common ones are like the first four here, I'd say. So ScanNet, Kitty is also pretty nice for outdoor scenes, um, autonomous cars driving around. And we can even see like if we take a look at the values. So these are percentages. They're actually like outperforming the other models here significantly. This is a new state-of-the-art model. It can be used for a lot of different use cases, but again, it is still um, pretty slow. But again, all the hardware, all the models becoming better over time. And this is the news research. This model just came out a couple of days ago. So let's just go over a couple of examples here. You can just use this space if you want to run it and you want to download the images directly. If you don't want to set up the code, we can also take a look at the GitHub repository. They're basically just showing how to run it locally as well. It is. It doesn't really take like too much time. You just have to set it up with either Ubuntu or Mac OS, Windows and so on. They have some installation guides. If you're using uh, Windows, you actually like need WSL. And, and then you also need to install CUDA support for that. So it's a bit harder to actually like install here on Windows, but if you're on, on Mac OS or Ubuntu, it is pretty easy, or else you can just use the Google Colab notebook as I'm going to show you in just a second. So here we can just take like one of the examples. We already saw that from their website, but they have this really nice space that you can just directly go in and use. You can also go in and drag and drop your own image if you have that. Just drop it into here to the left and it will then go in and do the prediction. You even have this slide bar so you can go back and forth between the depth map and also the color depth map. And you can also go down and, and download them here. So both 16 bits and also floating point 32, depending on like what you want to use in your application. We can also go down and, and download our image Again, we'll get the download image. We can see it, we can use it in our own applications and so on. If you want to use the code directly, you can go inside the files, take the app here. And this is basically like how we can set up this hog and face space. You can just clean up out the demo and then you can use the code directly in your applications. So now we have everything Now we covered both the examples and also how we can run some quick inference and try out this model in Hawk and Face space. So they basically have this whole notebook that you can just go in and run through. They both have the project website that we took, that took a look at. They have the GitHub repository, the paper, Hawk and Face based, Hawk and Face model, and also the license here. But here you can see we have this Google Colab notebook. You can just run it directly and you'll be able to either upload your own images or use some sample images. And then it will display the input images and then you can run inference at the end and download the results. But we can also go in and run it locally as we saw in the GitHub repository. So I already did all the setup. It was actually like pretty straightforward and I'm on a Windows right now. It's a bit more um, advanced compared to just running it on Mac OS or Ubuntu. So here we can actually see we just have an installation guide for VSL. So this is basically just how we can run Ubuntu under the hood in Windows. So here you can either go inside Microsoft Store here, and then you can just type in Ubuntu and download the Ubuntu distribution that you want to use. So let's just type that in. So you can see that I've installed Ubuntu. Again, you can choose the version that you want, but definitely just go with 22 in this example. So then we can actually just have WSL here. You can follow the installation guide in here. It is straightforward. This is just from Microsoft. So there's not really like a lot to that. And then you can download Ubuntu inside the Microsoft store. After we have that, we need to go in and install CUDA support for WSL and that, and there we have um, basically just a really simple one from NVIDIA. So first of all here, we, we basically just need to install the NVIDIA GPU driver. So first of all, we need to go inside the downloads from NVIDIA. After that, we can go in and install WSL2. So we're just going to call this install and also update in a Windows terminal or in a command prompt, PowerShell or like whatever. So we can just open up a standard command prompt. I already have it installed right now, but this is pretty much like everything that we need to do. 
So you see here WSA, executable, install, and after that we can go in and run update. So you can see here Ubuntu is already installed from the Microsoft Store. So that's everything that you need to do. So here we can basically just go inside the download drivers on NVIDIA. Right now I'm on an RTX 4090, game ready driver, search, and then you can just go in and directly download it from the download drivers from NVIDIA's side. So now we click like everything. We can just run this from the Windows command, WSL, and then the default distribution is Ubuntu. Then we need to go down and install CUDA support for WSL2. So you, first of all, you need to go in and create a username and also a password. And then you'll be able to do this if you actually go inside Ubuntu. So you can just open up your Ubuntu terminal. You will get it over here to the left. And now we're actually inside Ubuntu. So then you just need to go in and follow each of these individual steps. And then after that, we get option one or also option two. So here we can see that this is actually like how we can go in and install WSL Ubuntu for our CUDA toolkit. And I was just using the first option here. I found that to be the easiest. Again, you just need to go in and basically just download it here. So WSL Ubuntu, and then just copy paste each of these individual commands inside your Ubuntu terminal. So here you just take each of these individual ones, copy it inside our Ubuntu here, and then we just basically just install all of these individual steps. And this is how you can install CUDA toolkit for WSL Ubuntu. After that, we pretty much have everything and we can go in and run this model locally. So let's now go back. So here we can see that we have both our drivers. This is the only thing that we need to do, WSL and CUDA support because this is running Linux under the hood. And that's why it's easier to run a native Ubuntu or Mac OS. We also need Python 3.10. They have tested out on an M1 MacBook, RTX, 3080 and also 4090 and you can also go in and use Mamba if you want to use that so here you can need to act like create an environment so using Mamba which can be installed together with miniforge so also did that step it's not really too complicated but inside here you can just go in um, and act like just go down and install it so you can just call the curl and then you can have bash because now we're actually like inside a linux environment inside your ubuntu command prompt or like terminal so you can just do it like this two commands and then you have that installed as well. So now we're gonna go back, create an environment here with Mamba. So you just call Mamba environment create, Marigold, and then we're going to create an environment based on this YAML file with our old environment. So all the dependencies and all the things that needs to be installed. We can then go in and activate our uh, Marigold environment. I can just help follow you guys through that. So let's open up our Ubuntu command prompt again. We have our conda, activate Marigold. Now we can see that we have activated our Conda environment. So now we can go down and just test on our own images or we can go in and run inference. So if you don't have any images that you want to test on, you just want to test if this model act like works, you can call this bash script, which is just going to download some sample data, which is this exact same one as in the Google Colab notebook. I've already done that. So I can just directly go down and run the Python file here. So let's just go take a look at that. And that's actually like the only thing that we need. So a couple of installation steps, set up our Ubuntu distribution if you're on Windows. And then we have this run file, which is basically just taking care of all of it. It's just calling the model, setting up the directories, calling models if you're using like MPS, CPU or CUDA. Going to do a forward pass. It is going to extract the, the, the depth map. And then it's going to like convert it if you're going to use floating point 16, uh, integers or floating point 32 from pre-trained Marigold. So this is the exact same code as in the GitHub. Uh, repository or like in the Google Colab notebook, we have the dev color, dev to prediction. It's just going to save that to a number of different directories. So this is pretty much everything that is doing in the Hawk and Face space as well, together with the Gradio demo wrap on top of that. So if we just go back here again and delete all of this, then we should be able to go in and run it. That's the wrong one I opened up. So here we have our Marigold run Python run, input RGB directory, input in the wild example, and you also need to specify our output directory. So if we done this, we just get an error because we forgot to cd into the directory. So we have this marigold that I cloned before, and now we should be able to run our command. So run Python, we have our input directory and also the output directory. Device, we're using CUDA and it found eight images. Loading pipeline components, estimating depth. So here we can actually see we have this um, trackbar here as well. 
where we see that we're going to process eight images. We have the inference badges, and we will also see the, the diffusion steps in just a second. So depending on your hardware, this might take some time, probably like 10 seconds per iteration, a couple of minutes or so, depending on your hardware again. And these are also some very large images. So some of the images here in the sample data set is 4K images. So that's going to take significantly longer compared to if you have lower resolution images. So you can try it out with your own. You just need to put your images in this um, directory or specify the directory path and also the output. You can just create an, an empty folder and then the input directory could just be an arbitrary one that you choose on your own. So here we see that is doing all the inference. So to be able to go in and access our directory and also the files in our Linux environment, we basically just need to go inside our Linux in the file explorer, we go inside Ubuntu, and then we should be able to, to go in and locate it. So here we should have our uh, home directory. Inside our home directory, we have Nego. And then we have our Marigolds, which is the one that we cloned. We have our input directory. So this is where you actually want to put your own ex images. And these are just the exact same image example as you saw on the Hawk and Face base and also in the GitHub repository and in the Google Colab notebook. Then we also have our outputs here again. So we're going to see the output. So we have the depth. BW, we have the colored, and then we also have the NumPy arrays if you want to use that directly. Let's go ahead and take a look at the colored one. So this will just run for a couple of seconds or like a couple of minutes. But again, we can just see the height details in the output depth maps. Let's go to the next one. So this is the cat. Again, even if you zoom in, we can just see this really nice color gradient throughout the whole image with the depth. This is also pretty cool. We have the house here as well. Nice details around that. We have the Ferris wheel. So again, these are some really nice depth maps here. You can even see the cat behind like um, behind the grid, the outdoor one. And again, you can go in and see here, we have the estimating depth, O ratings, because I've already like run this example. But again, it takes around like 80 seconds per duration. I'm running this on a 4090 graphics card. So this is definitely not going to run in real time. Um, that's for sure. Like a lot of processing and like a lot of processing actually going on and a lot of research needs to be done to be able to run these models in real time if you want to use it in real time applications. So again, the Midas ones is still pretty good a trade off between accuracy and speed if you want to use it for something like that. If you just real, run really high details, maybe for facial recognition, you don't really care about the speed or something like that. Or if you just want to like cr generate like 3D animated images or something like that or create whole environments based on a single image or a single prompt then this model here is really good for that. So when you're taking a look at like, for example, text to 3D, text to room and, and all those different models, which is basically just taking text or taking an image to the image and then basically projecting into 3D space, it is using these models under the hood. So this is how we can run it. We've been over a couple of examples, both like the, the one from DeepMind and then also this Marigold. We took a look at the model architecture, the results, did some comparisons. We took a look at the Gitter repository, how we can run it in the Hawk and Face bait. It is really good for just testing out the model. You can go in and download the model, extract all the code, use it in your own applications and projects. And that's pretty much everything that we have covered. Now we can use it on your own, even locally. So I hope you have learned a ton. I hope you can use this model. This is definitely state of the art. The details are very nice. So I hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning. So if you want to take your machine learning, AI, and computer vision skills to the next level, I also have my courses on the website. You can go check them out. We have everything from update detection with deployment, update tracking with Yolo V8. We also have transformers and segmentation courses. The most interesting one, for me, it's definitely like this research paper implementation course where we learn how to actually like implement research paper architecture. So we're going to have the architecture on one side, we're going to have code on the other side, 